Hey guys, Michael Corsentino for Shutter Magazine with a full-on look at clamshell lighting. Clamshell lighting is your go-to beauty lighting setup because it is a light that has very little direction and it is when we add direction that we add shadow. So because of there because there's a lack of direction with this light, it's placed directly in front of the subject you have a very a nearly shadowless light so it's very flattering light shadow will uh, accentuate things like wrinkles and it adds uh, you know dark areas and more drama this is a very light kind of uh, ethereal soft glowy kind of look and having the light directly above the camera at a 45 degree angle and pointed down uh, will give you that kind of light in addition to it's a it's a two light setup or two sources um, in a clamshell orientation which we'll cover as we move through these slides uh, it is a for those of you guys familiar with the circle of light concept which I've outlined in, in uh, articles previously uh, basically where it dictates where your light source is from left to right around the subject this light source would fall at the 12 o'clock position directly in front of the subject above the subject and I'll, I'll, you'll see this in behind the scenes slides as we move forward through this video but that's where it would be and and it is a variation uh, on Paramount or Beauty Light, which is just a one light setup. This light employs a fill from underneath that kind of mirrors the angle uh, of the key light above, and that can either be a reflector or a second light source, which we'll look at both of those uh, iterations. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is kind of take you through some of the usual suspect tools uh, that you can use in order to achieve this look. The good thing about this look is that you can use a whole slew of different light modifiers, so more than likely you'll have one of these in your kit already, uh, and if not, they're pretty inexpensive to, uh, to, get, to get started. So let's take a look. Let's have a look here at our key light options. All right, so I wasn't able to show you every single option that to shoot with every single option, but I wanted to show you what the options are at your disposal. Uh, my go-to for this look is a beauty dish. I use a Mola Demi uh, beauty dish. Mola Soft Lights makes this Demi beauty dish, which you're seeing here. Um, and then you can further modify it with either a diffusion sock or a grid. Additionally, if you look at the inside of the, um, of the beauty dish, you can see that there's a mesh dish, uh, a mesh disc rather, which diffuses the light. You can also put what's called an opal, piece of opal glass in there, um, which is an option for this particular beauty dish, which is one of the reasons I like it, um, that f allows you to further uh, soften the light. Okay, I did not use that for this shoot. I used it as you're seeing here, and I'm going to show you all of the variations uh, that you're seeing here. Use bare, use with sock, and use with grid. All right, that I was able to do. We're going to look at some of the other options. You can use a an octobank, and I've uh, pictured it here with its um, optional grid, egg crate grid. You can also use a softbox, again, with or without the grid. And you can use umbrellas, either shoot through or bounce back. The shoot through is going to be more the typical um, use here because the rods for the shoot through point back away from the camera. Uh, they also provide a nice soft light. You don't have as much of an edge clearly when you're working with an umbrella. You've got light coming, going everywhere. Uh, but it is possible to use an umbrella to achieve this look, an umbrella above and an umbrella below. Um, the, the bounce back umbrella pictured below here is a little bit more difficult to use because of the way that the rods would have to face in toward the subject, and these are typically used. Uh, this orientation is typically rather close to your subject, and the lens has to kind of point down the barrel right through the center of the light, so the you know the rods from the umbrella could could get in the way. Not what I recommend, not what's typically used, but in a pinch you could you could do that. So again, what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to focus on my real world uses and what I typically use, and that's going to be the beauty dish. So I'm going to walk you through uh, using the beauty dish bare, using the beauty dish with a sock. 
uh, and using the beauty dish with a grid just to show you those different qualities of light and what the catch light that they create in the eye. Uh, and then we're going to move on to actual clamshell lighting where we introduce a second source, a fill source below. So right now what we'll be looking at are going to be uh, either Paramount or Beauty because we're only working with that one light from above at a 45 degree angle directly in front and above our camera. All right, so let's close down this. And let's start taking, oh, well, you know what, first, you know what I want to do, I want to talk to you about the fill light options before we even get to that. Okay, so for the fill light options, uh, and again, because we're going to be using two lights, one above and one below, and the one below can either be a reflector or a secondary light source. So, we can use, for that secondary light source, we can use any of what we used for our key light. Okay, we can use the beauty dish, the Okta, the softbox, or the umbrellas. So again, tremendous amount of flexibility and variation possible. Or a mixture of all of these could be used as well. They don't necessarily have to be the exact same modifier top and bottom, okay? Just wanna make sure that that's clear. All right, additionally, if you, you can also use a strip box, which is what we ended up using for our second look, okay? Because I, I like the catch light that it creates uh, and using uh, a second light gives you uh, considerably more control over the intensity of the light and the contrast of the light. Uh, it's, a, it's a look and you'll see that it's a very different look than using a, a reflector uh, where you have typically a, a much softer kind of look. Um, Okay, so in addition to that, you can use reflectors, and this is what's often used uh, in clamshell lighting. You'll have a strobe above and a reflector below. Now, there are different kinds of reflectors that you can use, and this is when the whole kind of game becomes the catch light that's created in the eye from the fill, and the quality of light, the, the uh, contrast, the specularity, um, the the luminosity or the intensity of the light. So all of the, all of these, uh, the shapes and the kind of fabrics that are used, either silver or white, are going to dictate the catch light that you get and, and the quality of that catch light and the quality of the fill light that you're going to create, okay? So I'm going to walk you through use uh, with the Beauty Dish. Uh, we're going to use the uh, Sunbounce Micro Mini. We're going to use the Lastolite Triflector. And this is, uh, the one pictured here and the one that I'm using is actually an older version um, that's no longer made by, uh, by Westcott. But you can now get something very similar called the Lastolite Triflector. Uh, and then we'll also use the Westcott Eyeliner. And you'll see that each of these uh, has a very particular look to the catch light and particular uh, intensity uh, to the light. Uh, or luminosity, uh, brightness, right? Um, and lastly, for our second look, we'll use the strip light, and you'll see that that's an, a whole other look. Uh, so you have a lot of options to work. So we're gonna we're gonna start with our uh, beauty dish, and we're gonna walk you through the variations of the beauty dish. Then we'll introduce reflectors, each one, um, and then we'll move on to the strip box for our fill. And we've got lots of behind the scenes images for you guys as well to look at. Okay, so let's start with our beauty dish and the various modifications that we can make to it. All right, so here we've got just the bare beauty dish. And again, right now we have no fill underneath and this, uh, because of this, because of our light position, which is directly in front of our subject above the camera at about a 45 degree angle at the 12 o'clock position in our circle of light, we have what is known as beauty light or paramount light. Okay, because it creates this shadow under the nose. That's about the only shadow that we really have. Uh, granted, you know, we have a shadowed light be because there's no other fill under the chin and stuff, but on the face, there are, very, there are minimal shadows. Uh, so you can see here, let's take a look here. Let's open up our markup layer so I can do a little bit of drawing and call your attention to a few things. So what I want you to pay attention to here is this catch light. There it is. Okay, so this is our catch light. That's our catch light from our beauty dish. And you can see here that it has a particular quality to it. Okay, so it's just something to bear in mind. One of the reasons that I prefer a round modifier, either an octobank or a beauty dish, is the fact that it creates a round catch light, which more closely mimics the round quality of the iris. And you know, it's much more natural looking in the eye. So I prefer it. That's one of the reasons I prefer this beauty dish, this particular, this Mola Demi beauty dish, because it creates a nice soft light, but it's got a little bit of crispness, a little bit of specularity to it. And I, I like what it does. Here we're using it bare, so we're going to have a little bit more specularity uh, than we would if we used it with a sock, which we'll move on to next. 
All right, so that's what we're looking at here. That's beauty dish, bare beauty dish, no fill light. Okay, so it has, a, and each one of these is gonna have a little bit of subtleties, little nuanced differences, and I want you to see what those are like because they're all choices that you'll make that will dictate the ultimate look and feel of your image. And that ultimately, that, that really is what all the choices are about that we're making. All right, so that was bare beauty dish, no fill light. Let's look at beauty dish with a sock okay, and no fill light. So you can see here, when we look at this one, you can see here that the catch light changes. So it's a softer catch light. Because it's got that diffusion material on it, you can see here that the catch light is a little softer, uh, a solid white catch light. And more importantly, the light, the overall light that we have here is also much softer. You can see here that there's the specularity that we had without the sock is now reduced. Uh, the light output is a little reduced, so you may need to boost your uh, the power of the intensity of your light a little bit. Uh, and we've got a softer transition in shadows a little bit. We've just kind of diffused that light and softened that light a little bit. Again, less specularity in our highlights and uh, you get the picture. All right, so that is bare, I'm sorry, that is beauty dish with sock and no fill light. All right, next up we're gonna move on to beauty dish with grid. So what a grid does is a grid is going to really focus that beam of light that's created uh, by the strobe. And it's going to put that light, pull that light in a very concentrated area. And you can see here that we've got that there and here. And there's also a rapid fall off of the light because the light is constrained. This is a 20 degree grid spot and it, it really constrains the light just to a, you know, basically a circle of light, which you can kind of see here. And then everything else just starts to kind of fall off. Um, really much more rapidly than without. All right, uh, in terms of the catch light, it's fairly similar to just the bare beauty dish. So something, uh, you know, to keep in mind. I, I love a grid in the, in the right circumstances. I don't typically use it for beauty work, um, but I'll use it more for fashion and kind of edgy, edgier look because it, it's such a dramatic kind of light. All right, so that is, um, let me just turn this off for a second. So that's beauty dish with grid, no fill. All right, so those are our three iterations. Okay, we looked at bare, we looked at beauty dish with sock, and we looked at beauty dish, well, bare beauty dish, beauty dish with sock, and beauty dish with grid, all right? So those were all, as I said, paramount and butterfly lighting setups. Now, next we're gonna move on to uh, what, what qualifies for clamshell lighting because we are going to introduce a fill source below. The beauty dish with the sock, and a sun bounce white reflector. Okay, this is sort of your baseline look. All right, so let's open this up so we can talk about it. All right, make sure I'm on the markup layer. So again, we're using the beauty dish with the sock, which is gonna give us a nice soft light. And we're using a white reflector, which is going to bounce light back up into the subject and open up the shadows, right? So. And it also is going to create a unique kind of catch light. And each one of these, now that we're into the fill, each one of our fill sources is going to create a unique and different quality of not only fill, but of the catch light that it creates in the eye. So something to keep in mind. So first, let's look at what's happening with our fill light and why we're using it. We're using it to open up shadows. So you can see here that the shadows under the neck all open up. Anywhere where there's going to be shadows from, from above, under the lips, under the nose, all of these shadows, the eyes, all of these shadows open up and we have a much more pleasing uh, quality of light, a much more you know, uh, glowy kind of light. Uh, if, her, if Kira's hair was down, we would have some fill along the sides of the face as well. So a way to really fill in and open up the look and give a much more airy kind of quality to the look. Uh, we also get a nice catch light in the eyes here. Uh, we get a brighter uh, catch light in the lower part of the eye as well. Let's take a look at that catch light. So because we're using a rectangular source, we have a rectangular catch light and here it is, right? And again, we're not talking about the key catch light, which we've already discussed. We're talking about the fill catch light. So we've got this kind of crescent shape catch light and it's very low intensity. It's a very soft catch light, um, which works well for this particular look. Sometimes there are, again, a, a variety of looks that we're going to take a look at. So you'll see that this is not the only way to do it, uh, but it is one of the ways to do it. Okay, so that's Beauty Dish, Diffusion Sock, 
and white reflector underneath. Now you could use any kind of ref any kind of white reflector is going to work. Even a piece of foam core in a pinch is going to do the trick. Okay, the the thing is the size and the angle. You want to match the angle basically of the key light, and you want to keep it fairly close to the subject. I'm going to show you a behind the scenes photo on this, so you'll see exactly what that looks like. Let's take a look at our behind the scenes. Okay, so let's look at what's going on here. Here we've got our key light, and that is our beauty dish, and here we've got our fill source, right? So basically, it's an over and under clamshell situation here, clamshell arrangement, where we've got over and under lighting. So the key light, of course, is lighting up our subject. It's also lighting up our reflector, and the reflector is then bouncing light back up in to fill in the shadows, right? So it makes sense, pretty straightforward. Now this light could even be more angled because basically you wanna try and match the angles of the key and the fill. But that's gonna just gonna be kind of a season to taste thing. This was working, we're still getting spill here, but if you wanted more specularity and you wanted more punch, you wanted more output from this reflector, then you would increase the angle of this to more closely match this reflector, all right? So that is our setup overall, and that is really not going to differ. We're going to swap out the reflector uh, with various other sources, different reflectors, and, and finally a, a, a second light source. But this arrangement, this over and under clamshell arrangement, is what is what remains consistent for clamshell lighting. Beauty dish with sock uh, and a white triflector. Now the triflector is a really unique reflector, a really unique tool. Uh, in that it allows you to use three different sections. So if we look at this reflector, it's got these three panels, and they're all hinged, right, at these points in the center, uh, side to side, rather. So that means that we can use either the outer panels or just the center panel. We can fold the outer panels in, or we can use just one of these side panels or all of them. So you really have a tremendous amount of flexibility to add fill, not only from below the face, but from either side, from one side or both sides of the face. Now, it does create a particular catch light. You can see here that we've got this kind of three-sectioned catch light going on here. Uh, so just something worth considering. Now you can also swap out the fabric from, uh, you can use either silver or white. I'm not sure if there's gold. Uh, I would, would typically don't use gold in this scenario, um, but I will use either silver or white. Here we're using white so you can see it's got a particularly soft catch light in the eyes, but it really gives us some extra fill around the face. Now when we, it was interesting when we swapped this out and we, uh, we added this reflector uh, after we moved on from our flat, surface reflector, uh, it did change our needs in terms of makeup because it lightened up all of this. So all of a sudden, that kind of contouring that Shelly had done on the makeup needed to be reinforced because this area became much lighter, uh, consequently, you know, due to this uh, one of these panels here lighting up the face. So just something to keep in mind. It's going to change the quality of light, and when it changes the quality of light, your makeup may have to follow suit. Okay, so that is our second reflector. Let's move on to our third look, which is going to be a, um, no, that's not our third look. This is our third look. Our third look is a beauty dish with sock and eyeliner. Now the eyeliner, again, is another really unique reflector in that it is a fixed curved reflector with a fixed angle uh, and it's only available with silver fabric. So we've got our beauty dish, we've got our sock, that's what's remaining consistent, that's my, my you know, that is typically what I'm going to be using is the beauty dish with sock. So that remains consistent. And then I'm you know, showing you the different modifiers that we can incorporate and the different catch lights that they're going to create as well. The different fill light modifiers that we can use. Uh, so you can see here that the, that the 
catch light that it creates, that the, that the eye lighter creates, is very unique. It's this crescent-shaped catch light, and it also has a high degree of specularity. It opens everything up. It's a really punchy, kind of contrasty look, and I kind of like it. Uh, it. It doesn't work in all cases, but it works really well sometimes, and this is one of those times. It also is really well suited for work uh, creating black and white images. And again, I'm not using the Beauty Dish uh, exactly matching the uh, uh, the the look. Uh, I'm not I'm not uh, exactly matching. Let's take a look at our behind the scenes here, and you'll see. Uh, let's see here. Let's take a look at our behind the scenes, and you can see what we're doing. First, let's let's take a look at our catch light here. Again, I wanted to show you that before we take a look at the behind the scenes. So there's that crescent shaped catch light. And, and again, like I'm saying, we're going to see in the behind the scenes that I'm not using this light uh, exactly matching the angle of the eye lighter, which is why you can see here that there's more light in the lower part here. If I angled it more, this entire thing would light up and it would be very, very bright all the way around that crescent. Okay. Just a, you know, judgment call, taste call for what you, what you desire. Uh, in this case, I liked it a little bit more subtle. But you can see here it does create a really punchy kind of catch light, um, which I think is kind of cool. All right, so let's take a look at what that looks like behind the scenes. And there we go. That's what we're looking like right there. You know, I'm realizing that I didn't show you behind the scenes for the triflector, so I just really quick want to turn that on and show that to you. That's what it looks like with the triflector in action. And you can see here, this is a good slide to show you the uh, where the camera is positioned in relationship to the key light uh, and the reflector and subject. And there's Shelly doing her makeup wizardry. Um, okay, so that is that. And we'll go back to the eyeliner, and you can see here similar scenario, uh, but the shape uh, and the fixed angle of the eyeliner is giving us a really unique catch light. All right, so that's our three reflector variations. The beauty dish with three different reflectors. Now we're going to swap out our reflectors, and we are going to bring in a, uh, a secondary light source. So I wanted to show you that you guys can achieve this look. Uh, with just one light and a reflector. I think that's really important to keep in mind. Uh, however, you can also use a second light source, a second strobe, right? A second light. So you can have a two light setup as well. And that's what we're doing for our second look is we're using a second light source, a second strobe instead of a reflector. And I've modified that second light source with an Ellen Chrome Rotolux strip box. Okay, a 14 by 35 strip box. And you can see here that all of a sudden our catch light becomes very, very different looking. All right, I like, it's got this nice kind of shape going to it. It's also very, very bright compared to using a reflector. All right, and we're, so we're able to control the brightness a, a lot more, uh, considerably more than with a reflector because we can, you know, just turn a dial and change the temp, change the uh, intensity, uh, and we're able to control the contrast, the specularity, uh, by using different fabrics inside the softbox. Now, this particular softbox is silver, so it's going to give us a lot of punch, but we could use a different softbox, a uh, strip box or softbox uh, that had white inside. So that would also, you know, give us less or more contrast. Silver is going to give you more contrast, more punch, more specularity. Um, so you can see here, different look, different tool, just another option to have at your disposal, right? So that is what that's looking like. Let's take a look at the uh, behind the scenes on that. So I can show you what that looks like. So there you can see we've got our strip box below with a second light. We've got our key light above and from that, we're creating our second look, okay? A very different kind of catch light, a very different kind of look. Let's take a look at our finals and we'll describe what we've got going on there. So here is our first look. This was the final from the first look and I have to give a big shout out to Shelly Yard for her beautiful makeup work and uh, Christina Shark for her beautiful uh, retouching. You can find her at sharkpixel.com and Shelly is at uh, Makeup Artistry, Shelly Yard Makeup Artistry. And I have a slide at the end with some credits so you guys can see what's what, the team that was responsible for this. So this is our first look. Our first look, we uh, the final, for the final, we used a Beauty Dish with Sock. 
uh, and then we used a, an highlighter uh, below. So just gorgeous glowy light, uh, one light setup, uh, you know, strobe and a reflector, and we've been able to create this beautiful look. All right, let's take a look at our second look. This final's from our second look. Uh, and again, a different kind of quality of light. We've swapped out our reflector and we're using a strobe as our fill. So we've got two light setup. That uh, beauty dish uh, with sock as our key and a strobe below as our fill fitted with an Ellen Chrome strip box 14 by 35. Uh, much stronger, punchier kind of catch light, stronger, punchier kind of look. Uh, and that's it. That really uh, kind of runs the gamut for what's possible with clamshell lighting. Again, you can use this close. You can use it further away. Here we're just doing three quarter and headshots, but you can definitely back this all off, increase your intensity, and get a similar look if you wanted to do uh, full figure work. So also a good way uh, to shoot full figure work for kind of fashion and beauty stuff. Um, let's take a look at who's helped make all of this possible. The creative team for this shoot, our model was Kira. She's awesome. If anybody's interested in working with Kira and you're in Central Florida, just uh, send me a uh, private message on Facebook and I'll see if I can connect you guys. Uh, same thing goes for our awesome hair and makeup artist Shelly Yard and our amazing retoucher Christina Shirk of sharkpixel.com. So thanks guys for making a great shoot possible and thank you guys for watching the video. Hopefully you've learned some stuff along the way and are excited to try clamshell lighting. Until next time, this has been Michael Corsentino for Shutter Magazine.